Hey, Aaron here with GrowLawnUglyWeeds.com. Today we're in Mansfield, Texas, and uh, we're going to check out this uh, take all root rot, do some training. We're going to show you exactly how to tackle take all root rot. All right, so, so first of all, let's identify what take all root rot will look like. It, the St. Augustine will look just like this, and it'll have some yellowing, okay? And what you do is you want to get rid of some of this. And then you want to you want to look at the roots or the the runners, okay? You see how that's black, and it has very stunted roots. That's going to be the take all root rot. Now, for me to confirm that, I'm going to look at that through a microscope, okay? But luckily for them, they got some green runners in here. This is also Niagara spore stolen rot too. But let me see that rake. I want I want to gently get out this uh, the dead stuff, and I want to remove it <clears throat> from the lawn because that's what's keeping that uh, that's what's keeping that disease in there. Is it's in the first couple inches of the soil. We want to rake it out to where we don't we don't disturb the the what the green runners that we do have. So there's a little bit of green here, a little bit of green in here. You can see the black, all the black. And you see the root, there's no root system here. And the blackened roots, black, and they get better. They should be tan or white color. All right, so let's knock this out real quick. So this is what take all root rot looks like. It's gonna be in lawns that are in shade or sunken in. So we got some shade here. And then another, another factor, if they get run off from the neighbor, so that it's constantly wet back here. Whenever it rains, then all the neighbor water comes back here and uh, uh, there's water. And you can see they have a full drain, but it's still it's still causing them a problem. So sometimes when you're digging around in the lawn and you're removing the thatch, you might come across some snakes. So we're gonna let this let this guy go. I'm just going to ask a question. Do you know the answer? Um, I don't see any yellowing here. I've seen a lot of yellowing in St. Augustine Yard, but not here. So the, the so here with the cell cell sign was just that some dead areas. You have a you have a bunch of dead runners. The dead the runners shouldn't be dead. That's that's a cell cell sign. But yellowing is the first indicator, and you won't see this active when the grass is dormant because yeah. dormant grass and dead yeah. grass look the same brown, right? You don't normally see this take all root rot or other diseases until they're coming out of dormancy, which in, in uh, Fort Worth is going to be late March, April, and May is when you're coming out of dormancy. And, and this is when you'll see these type of, type of issues. Now, take all root rot is very sensitive to pH. So you want to get your soil pH somewhere around 6.5 it would be ideal. But we have high pH soils around here. So getting your pH from whatever this was, I didn't test the soil, but it's going to be high, and then it's typical for the Fort Worth area, even in Dallas, we're, we're notorious for having high pH soils. So we're going to apply this peat moss, which is a pH of about two, and try to just change the pH of the soil just in the first inch or two. That's where that take all root rot is in the first couple inches of the soil in the fats layer. And so removing this this residue or, or the dormant and dead grass from the top is is in, uh, very important before you apply the uh, peat moss. And so now uh, we've that we've raked everything out. We're going to go ahead and apply the peat moss with this lansy. So as David puts out this peat moss, he's going to go over it one to two times, and he's using a lansy spreader. You can find this lansy spreader on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description below so you can purchase it yourself. There's multiple versions you can get. I believe this is the 30 inch version. I bought this one so we could get it in and out of back gates. Now we don't provide this service, but we do offer uh, a free rental to our customers that want to do it themselves. So if, if so, if you're a customer and you want to borrow this Lansy to apply the peat moss to your lawn, Please just give us a call. Uh, you can come by and get it and use it for a couple of days and then bring it back at no charge. So this area right here, this this area is probably 90% dead. If this were my yard I, or 
I would recommend replacing this St. Augustine. So when you have Shaco Rural, you probably are going to have to replace some areas. Before you decide whether you're going to replace them or not, ask yourself if you want St. Augustine before you replant. Because you might not want it. I would never have St. Augustine in my lawn in Fort Worth unless I absolutely have to. And this yard doesn't need to have that much of a shade tolerant grass. I would go with Zoysia in this backyard if it were me. Because this area is not moving back. Probably get the long carry, but the irrigation system might have been bad right here, or the the take on root rod just took took it out by itself. Yeah, what are looking at? So we're we're all done now. This is what it should look like when you're done. You have the green grass that's poking through. None of it is smothered out. We removed a lot of the dead areas. Now there are some some uh dead runners that are still attached that are in the ground shell but this is the way i want the peat moth application to look like when you're done uh, so we'll still get kind of a close-up of just real close to the ground to kind of give people an idea of what it uh, looks like now the customer just needs to water this in and uh, they'll be on their way i'll come back in uh, about two weeks to see what kind of progress we've made